Hello guys, welcome back to another Conqueror's Blade video. Today we are going to be doing a unit guide. This guide has actually not been requested, but this has been one of my all-time favorite units. I've had it ever since it first came out, and I just thought, hey, it's still good now. I'll try, why don't I just do a guide on it? So we're doing Fortoratio Pikeman today. So. First things first, they are a 4 star melee infantry pike unit, 235 leadership, and 32 unit count. They're, they cost 4,180 uh, bronze to, to give them a single unit kit, so decently cheap. Uh, pretty, not, pretty low leadership for a tier 4 unit. Not that hard to level up, only level 18. Um, as you can see here, I use them pretty often. My stats aren't too bad. If you ever see stats really like this, this is usually because I brought them on an expedition. Hero kills, you really don't get this amount for an expedition. And I have gotten 6 hero kills in a battle with them. I'm pretty sure I posted that YouTube video. I'm pretty sure that is a YouTube video, so... You guys could go check that out. It's Fort Abraccio's Massacre, I think. That's 104 hero kills, so about hat one every two games or so. They are pretty good at killing units. They get, yeah, as you can see here, average 32, so about a 1 KD ratio. and It actually says a 2 KD ratio, so pretty good. Um, Back to the unit. Let's look at Doctrines first. So... I have the Epic Mobility Doctrine, which unlocks Sprint, increases movement speed for 15% or 8 seconds. Um, another doctrine you could use instead of that one would be the Epic Polearm Doctrine 3, which allows the unit to use Charge. Only reason I don't really do that one, along with the Sprint Doctrine, is because I prefer to just have these other doctrines on them. So, if you want, this is a good doctrine, you can use it. I just prefer not to. So how I have centered their doctrines is especially, or I have put a lot of anti-cab doctrine on these guys. You can see Pike Defense Doctrine increases un uh, damage taken from, reduces damage taken from cavalry when braced by 30%. That is a big amount, especially since these guys are so good at killing cab. Anti-cab doctrine. Increases damage versus cab by 120, just to increase damage dealt to cab, all that, just make them cab count. This doctrine, you, in my opinion, you must have. If you're going to play these units, it is a must. Bursting weapons stuns enemies, only apply to units with the race go. This, without the brace, without this doctrine, it's not as good. They aren't as good, they're still decent, but with the stun, this is where these guys excel. And then, a little bit of extra bracing damage. There is a Fortabraccio, uh, anti-cab doctrine. I don't have that doctrine yet. I might get it, I don't know. I'm a decent way along, I got just a couple left in the challenges. But, if, if you have that and maybe don't have this one, it is only... It is armor pen, and these guys do have a good armor pen, as I'll show later. So, yeah. Uh, if you don't have these doctrines, you could, say, put on, like, a defense doctrine for just make them a little bit more tanky. Piercing defense would probably want to go, as these guys can be countered by ranged pretty easily. But, if you don't have these doctrines, I would go for a bit of health, and then damage and armor pen and then maybe a little bit of tankiness if you are going to put between assassination and breakthrough do breakthrough because while these guys can definitely melt heroes they are more focused on killing units and they are especially good in territory territory wars so anyways moving on to the veteran two line so these veteran two lines are pretty much opposites of each other this one all the top line all about damage there is pretty sure no defensive stats along this 
this this right here is what makes them so so good double strike this is definitely you you definitely want this then you got just armor armor pen while bracing re reduce rain damage this is actually a good one this is the i think it's the yeah it's the only like damage reduction one along this line so it's a good one uh increases piercing armor pen by 10 percent once you max it out increases damage while bracing by six percent maxed out another six uh six percent piercing damage and 10 percent braced armor pen and a 12 percent uh crit value and then a base five percent piercing damage so that means you pretty much get a okay that's 10 percent Yeah, you get a like 30-45% increase to a armor pen well braced. So it's a really good. Um health pretty low. You could like put on another life doctor and bring it up. Oh, bottom line. If you go bottom line, it will bring them above the ten thousand mark. Bottom line is decent. But it's I'd say Fort Abrasio are the kind of units you want to focus on attack. The tankiness is Definitely does help. I personally have never tested out tanky line, but I've heard enough. I've heard about that this line is a good one. This is a good line, and you can go for it. I just like this one. This is a line I've always run. I unlocked these guys in season three. That that was the season I started too. So yeah. Um. Uh. Yeah. They got pretty high armor pen, decent damage. They aren't super tanky, as you can tell. They are per. They are slow. They are slow. Not Iron Reaper slow, but slow. Uh, traits. Ignore this one. This is one for season three. You don't need to worry about that. Sakanian Pikes units cannot fend off pikes. Cannot fend off cavalry, but they cannot actively fight while bracing. Uh, I'll show you guys what that means in the unit training yard. In a second, uh, fire resistant unit is less vulnerable to thermal weapons and swamp increases damage dealt. Gets cavalry by 16% and reduces an attack cavalry unit's movement speed by 60% per seconds. Unit cannot push heavy equipment or, uh, sorry, the unit is burdened with heavy equipment and cannot push siege engines or climb ladders. Stand firm, pretty much brace, yeah. And sprint, which is the doctrine skill. So, those of you who might be wondering what. Tire, I have the very dot unit tire unlocked in season five, and then I have the winged czar banner. I think, hmm, I think I'll swap that. Let me find a good one. You know, yeah, let's do that one. I have that one on the SFs too. If you guys want to see a guy on that one, let me know too. Um, now to head over to the training yard. Go to the building officer in your region's main city, however you want to do it. Oh, and also, if you guys would like to see a guide on the houndsmen, do let me know also. If you guys would like to see a guide on those guys too, I can do that. Um, I already uh, asked if anyone does want to see that. Uh, I didn't get a lot of feedback, so just thought I'd ask again. So anyways, into the unit training yard. Uh, I'll be a bit loading, but strong arms yep. and a long reach. All right, so they got Ready? three formations: dispersed, which they do not automatically brace, so that's good to know. This is, I wouldn't say a formation you'd want to use a lot. I'd say if you're kind of in an open area, like if there's a sally out or something, and you have cab coming towards you. And you're kind of maybe panicking or something, you Ready, might want to brace ice, them. Brace! This is one of their more vulnerable vulnerable formations, so be careful of it. F2 is a line. This one is good for if you're, say, pushing, or if you're holding a long area, or if you put them behind shields. This is this one's good. F3, kind of block or phalanx. 
This one is good for holding big like, quarters like this one right here, see? Or if you have them kind of positioned around the wall right here, that's also good. See, this here, so this is what it means by uh, earlier uh, in this Kanye and Pike's description. I don't know if we'll get a good example in this clip, so let's see. So yeah, see, uh, no. See right here, these guys close to the distance, the pikes aren't attacking them. They can't reach. If they get to the side, front, or too close in, the pikes cannot hit them. Unless, I'm gonna wait for them to kill that last unit, unless you do this. Unless you hit B, they can't do anything. And as you'll notice here, they can't actually stun. After me! So yeah, um, so this is what not to do. You do not want to put them in brace and actually, no, I'll just go kill these. I'll just kill them. But yeah, you do not want to have them charge you. You do not want to have them. You do not want to have them charge you with range. Make haste. So yeah, they are, they can survive up against a ranged attack, but it's not something you want to just do. So this is kind of how you want to play them. In you want to place, in a gateway, you want to kind of place so the front line doesn't fully go into this, depending on how long the gateway is. So it's kind of like you want them to sort of funnel into this area. Don't let them get in too close but you want to let them funnel in so that they can't kind of sit on the sides and still manage to hit you. So yeah, as you can see here, because the unit can't flank around, they'll just keep on attacking, and it's game over, really. For the only units that can really get in and encounter these guys are the... Down block! Spread out! Are the uh, would be Iron Reapers are pretty decent at closing the gap. Gray, uh, gray here Garrison. I wouldn't say they're too good, but with a skilled player that can knock them down, then yeah, you want to be careful of those guys. You want to be careful of Pike, Pike especially Pike, Maul, the Longsword with the charge, those guys. Um, the only cav that you really have to be afraid of is the monastics, because they're tanky enough that they can close the distance. Um, you can set these guys hard counter. Definitely axe raiders. If you have them, if you have these guys in phalanx and axe raiders charge, they don't stand a chance. Axe raiders, obviously. Um, other units, Paladin, you want to be careful, Paladin, uh, Stalwarts, any units with high block that can manage to get through a quarter of shield, those are units you want to be careful of, and obviously being flanked, but something fun about these guys is, if any cab, any cab tries to tr charge the US from the front, they act like they're not getting through. They might be able to close the distance and maybe deal some damage, but they can't really do it. This is how you want to play the Board of Ratios in an open space. Don't don't do Phalanx. Phalanx uh, is better for holding a position because of how many pikes there are, but Phalanx is the... And as a hero, you want to kind of see these units, how they're getting around. You, yes. As a hero, this is where you want to join in the fight. And the only time you ever really want to hit me is when you're finishing off the unit. Or here, I'll give a good demonstration of the, what you want to do. So what you do is, 
You, you have the confirmation. You hit X. Level attack. Then you brace. This is the kind of say you get units off your formation while still being able to deal damage to units. So, anyways, guys, let me know what you thought of these quarter ratios. Let me know what other units you'd like to see. Um. So, anyways, thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please do like and subscribe. But that's only if you want to and you enjoy the content. So, anyways, guys, I'll see you later. See you guys in the next one.